In this video tutorial, we're going to look at what you need to do to be a transcription reviewer. We'll be covering the following topics. Project overview, the process, reviewer's role, source of information, guidelines, and best practices. First, a quick overview of the project. The project started over a year ago digitizing 6,000 pages in 18 volumes of records maintained by the Smith Neck Friends Meeting. They're on our website for viewing, dartmouthhas.org. While this first phase of the project is complete, ensuring the preservation of this historic information, it's of limited value since it's all handwritten, difficult to read, and does not have indexes. For historians, genealogists, and anyone wanting to find information in these records, they need to be readable and computer searchable, which brings us to phase two, the transcribing of all these records. We're now actively in phase two. The process. While there are many critical parts of this effort, one of the top priorities which will make or break this project is quality of the end result. This is where you, as a reviewer, will have an important role. We maintain a database of over 3,000 images. These images are sent to professional transcribers in blocks of 25 images. Transcriptions coming back from transcribers are put into an incoming file. When you as a volunteer request transcriptions from the gatekeeper, they are copied from the incoming file with the corresponding image and sent to you, the reviewer. When you're finished with your review, you send your finished version to your assigned QA person. Early on, you'll probably have your transcription sent back to you from the QA person regarding errors and omissions. This is perfectly normal and should be considered a part of your learning curve. When finally approved by the QA person, the finished transcription is sent to the gatekeeper to be filed in the completed folder. The QA person will let you know of the completion so that you can initiate a request to the gatekeeper for more work. All transactions involving the gatekeeper are recorded into the master database. Let's look at your role as reviewer in more detail. The transcriber's priority is to get the handwritten words into computer text. They're not looking at content, are not familiar with Quaker terminology, and don't know local family names. Their work gets us most of the way there, but it by itself is not enough for the quality we need. This is where you as a reviewer come in. Your responsibility is to check the work of the transcriber and ensure the guidelines are met. You'll have available all the resources you need to refine these transcriptions and bring them up to final quality. Go to our website and click on the Quaker Project link. Everything you need to get started is there. This is our homepage. Click the Quaker Project link. Scroll down to the links and look at the guidelines. You'll see the Need to Know link where you'll find guidelines and examples. Under Reference Information, you'll find the name and destination links. The guidelines are what you need to learn to become a proficient reviewer. There are four pages of guidelines. Some situations you'll not come across very often, but when you do, you can go to the guidelines to get resolution or contact your QA person. It'll take time to learn all the guidelines, of course, but there are some you need to know right away. Let's take a quick look. This is a completed transcript. The transcription should be an exact typed copy of an original document. The key word here is exact. Everything should be rendered exactly as found in the original source. Spelling, punctuation, abbreviations, and the arrangement of text. Consistent formatting is needed. The left column for margin notes has a left margin of 0.25 inches. The main body of text is in the second column starting at 1.5 inches from left of page edge. Page numbers are on a line of their own, bold, center justified, no underlining, leading zeros, or parentheses. The one exception to the exact rule above is to boldface names and places. An important consideration is to be sure that the spell check slash grammar autocorrect option is turned off in your word processor. You don't want to accidentally correct spelling or grammar that may be incorrect in the record. Anything added to the transcription that is not in the original must be added in square brackets. If you need to add a comment, be sure it's in square brackets, not parentheses. An important addition you'll need to make is to add correct spelling of names. They're to be added in square brackets next to the incorrect spelling. Do not replace the incorrect spelling. 
the list of acceptable name spellings is in the resource section of the website. You'll see question marks in square brackets throughout these transcriptions. If the transcriber could not read a word or group of words, they'll insert the brackets and question mark. Look closely at the original record and see if you can read it. If you think you can make out a word based on context, add your word in brackets next to the transcriber's bracketed question mark. Let the reader make the final interpretation if it's important to them. Now, a quick look at destinations. The records may reference a destination using only the short location name. Find the removal destination list on our website and add the complete name location in brackets and in bold. Let's look at how to set up your computer to get started reviewing. This assumes a Windows computer, not a Mac, but the idea is the same. Identify or make space on your desktop. Click on File, Explorer to create three new folders on the desktop, Holding, Working, and Finished. Click Desktop Folder. Click on the New Folder icon and then name it. You'll do this three times and name the three folders, Holding, Working, and Finished. Three new folders are on your desktop. When you receive an email from the gatekeeper with transcriptions and associated images, download them to the download folder, which will be a default folder on Windows or Mac. Open the download folder on right, click on File, Open New Window. Place the second window next to the download window. Use the second window to open the holding folder. Highlight all transcriptions and their images in the download folder and move all to the holding folder. Click left on the mouse button, hold and drag. When you're ready to start reviewing one transcription, open both the holding and working folders. Move, don't copy the selected transcription and image from the holding folder to the working folder. In the working folder, open the transcription document, add rev1 to the end of existing file name. That'll give you two copies of the same document, Edit only the one you named with the Rev1. Open the document and image in two different windows. Position windows where you can best see both the image text and transcription text. You can zoom in on the image to make it as large as you need it. Important note, read each line in the original record first. Then read the transcription to see if you agree with the transcriber. If you read the transcription first, it becomes too easy to be influenced and assume that's what the record says. When finished, send reviewed transcription to your QA person, move Rev1 to the finished folder, then delete everything in the working folder. To recap, get familiar with the guidelines and resources. When you're ready to start, scroll down the Quaker project page on our website to the sign up form. Fill it out and click send. You'll receive an email within a day or so with an assigned QA person and a couple of transcriptions and their corresponding images to start. If you have any questions, email the gatekeeper, dan at daniel at dartmouthhas.org. If you'd like to talk directly, include your phone number and a good time to call. Thank you.